Brian now with that new contract, involving himself in the build-up play, finding Adiemi. Here he goes, difficult angle, and he slot that one through the legs of the keeper. Yo, we're just constantly attacking, and they've got no answer. Billy Gilmore letting it fly. Billy Gilmore, that is a potential goal of the season contender. The January transfer window is here and it's time to make some signings and the good thing is we've got money about 31 million to spend now we can't spend all of it 6 million needs to be kept aside for the funds that required for our new stadium but still that's good money it's all about reinforcing our squad because we've got a genuine shot at being in the Champions League next season it's incredible and that's what we're going to try and do in this episode improving our squad so that we can secure that Champions League spot Big episode, boys. A lot of transfer stuff will happen in this one. And if you guys are enjoying the grind of the Creator Club series, I'd appreciate if you could spare a second and drop a like on the video. Always helps the channel grow. Subscribe as well for daily FIFA 22 career mode content. And let's get things underway. Before we get into all the transfer business, we've got a press conference to attend. First question, post Brian's era, consider switching to a one-striker formation with Adiemi as the main man. I've actually thought about this, guys. When we play in the Champions League, it's it's just much better to have a midfield three and maybe Adiemi is the lone striker, Elliot on one side and possibly a good left winger. That is just way smarter, I feel. And Oliver Bryan is 77 rated. He continues to go down. He's 33. This might be the future, guys. We might need to start investing in more midfielders and wingers because I feel like that's the way I want to take the squad forward. So maybe slowly but surely we already start doing that because for me, end goal, I want to have a 4-3-3 formation. I feel it's the best way to succeed as a club. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking right now. Let me know what you guys think. For now, the Oliver Bryan will stay at the club. He's going to be one of our important players until the end of the season. No worries, but I'm talking about the future. Next up, train Riley Moore. Again, he's one of our top prospects from the academy. Talk about getting better wingers. He's one of them. He is one for the future, guys. So he's a great talent and will be only wasted if you don't trade him or at least loan him out. That's a good shout. I think what we'll do in this episode, promote him to the first team and try and loan him out in this window itself i think that's the smart thing to do next up what's your plan with marcelo when he starts to drop in his overall that's actually a really good question he's already dipped to a 76 but of course trying to convert his position to a sentiment to give him that overall boost but it's not happened yet we'll have to see why but the plan with him was anyways to just get a squad rotational player someone with a bit of experience to add to our squad and he's done that he's given good performances scored some screamers and I'm very happy with that. We'll keep using him, but I don't expect him to be a part for our team next season in a big capacity. But yeah, I think he's done his job. We got him for such a good deal, so can't complain, really. Player of the episode for this one is Karim Adiemi. I think that's number three for him. I'm not entirely sure, but what a season he's having. Ten goals already at the halfway point of the season. Just been incredible for us in the Premier League, and I'm really hoping he can keep this up. 79 rated, by the way. How mental is that? Let's just hope this form is what he can take forward to and soon I want him to be leading the line as a lone striker and that can only mean more goals for him so yeah it's gonna be more and more big performances from RDME I think that's what we can expect from him first of all guys what I do want to check is Marcelo what's up with him we've been trying to convert him to like a sentiment but it just keeps showing one week and I'm unable to comp you know like change his position man it's so annoying like I don't even know why might as well just put him on a def uh, on like a plan to keep those pace and defending stats and all up actually yeah I'm, I'm just unsure we need to keep those pace stats up so let me know what's up with that guys why can't we convert Marcelo to like a center mid also a bit of youth academy stuff Riley Moore one of our most talented prospects like ever 86 to 92 potential as you guys said it's time to promote him to the senior team there you go that is done now what are we looking like on his stats Riley Moore 62 rated will he benefit from playing in any other position now nah, i think he's destined to be a winger boys he is destined to be a winger we're gonna boost his uh i think he needs to get those dribbling stats up shooting as well so inverted winger for now um and you know what white playmaker three weeks and he gets an overall boost so we'll keep that on for now and we'll see what needs to be done but riley moore very excited about how he does also need to loan him out for this first season because yeah we got to do that also number nine riley moore i don't like that leon noble has left the number nine vacant because we sold him and i think there's only one man worthy of that right now and it is 
Karim Adiemi. We're going to give him that number nine. Even number 10 is vacant, boys. Who do we give number 10 to? We'll figure that out later. But for now, we'll have Riley Mordon, number 15. Okay, guys, so I'm right now scouting a few left wingers or players I think we can fit in that position. Harrison, hudson Adoy, Brian Gill, Emil smith -Rowe, I think all fit the bill. The only question is, which one can we afford? I decided left midfielder is the play because I realized Marcelo is our best player there. Reggie Nicholas can play there as well, but with Marcelo going down in his overall, with him possibly not being able to switch positions, that might be the best place to invest our money in right now. So that's what I'm thinking, guys. Let's see what what is possible and we'll decide soon for now we play arsenal in the premier league and we got to keep winning guys because top four is definitely a possibility to achieve that we'll need to keep winning for this one against arsenal we're using our wicket i feel like we don't use the away kit often but anyways that's the team i'm rocking marcelo plays as a left back because matic isn't fully fit so that's the reason apart from that it's a strong team billy gilmore elliot brian adiemi all start this one let's do this boys let's keep winning and making a case for top four more and more of a reality i know the main focus of this episode is all the transfers and all but we still gotta keep winning by the way, the white does look good on our club. I like it, man. Makes us feel like Real Madrid, especially Marcelo wearing the white. It, it does look like we're, we're a bit of Real Madrid here. By the way, Emil smith Rowe playing this game. Chance to maybe scout him a bit. Albert Lewin. Oh, he's done really well. The Tanganga couldn't keep him out. And Shane Hume with a big save. Proceeds to kind of punch Calvert Lewin in the process. Anyways... What a save from Shane Hume. Look at that. Set-piece opportunity. Oh, that's nice. Harvey Elliott doing a bit of defensive work. And look at him drive the ball forward. Incredible from Harvey Elliott here. The pace is there. And I see a lot of support as well. Harvey Elliott, he might just go all the way. Okay, that was that was just the wrong call. I maybe should have just passed it to, of course. Maybe Reggie Nicholas alongside me. Oh, Calvert-Lewin. 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 You give him space and he punishes you. What a player. Every who remembers him from my FIFA 21 days. Like, I remember him scoring scorpion kicks and all for me. Well, good to see him perform well on FIFA 22 as well. But against us, I don't like it. Great finish from him. Shane Hume couldn't stop that. 1-0 down. Arsenal in the lead. Calvert-Lewin. Oh, that's a good ball in Marcelo. Come on. That's the defensive inability of Marcelo costing us. Fair play, Arsenal. 2-0 up. It's been a bit of a disaster, guys. This game, like, yeah, a real bad one. Mil smith -Rowe. Oh, he's done me there. Calvert Lewin. Shane Hume, what? What's just happened here? 3-0 up Arsenal. This might be the worst start ever. Unreal. We've just been hammered by Arsenal of all teams. Not what I was expecting. Well, it's going to get worse now. If Capri doesn't get there, he does and saves us from conceding a fourth. I don't know what's happened in this game, but we just aren't playing the same football we've been playing all season long. Half time and we've been clapped. No two ways to this, you know, to hide it, I guess. Second half, let's just try and mount a fight back here at the Emirates. Not gonna lie, I feel like the game is done and there's not really much hope. So I'm thinking, might as well bring on Liam Dell up for Brian, give him some game time. Xavi Simmons on for Silva. A bit aggressive, guys, but let's do this. Let let's have a midfield of these two. And see what's up. Ooh, also I'm thinking Matic for Nicholas. And have Marcelo in a more aggressive role. Okay, let's do that. Emil smith throw a player we're scouting right now. Dodging all the challenges. Gwendoza inside for Trossard. I'm putting pressure on him. How is that a penalty? Literally, I didn't even press the tackle button. This has been a disaster. One of the worst games I've had in this series, man. How is that a penalty? Trossard, you... Oh. Oh, anyways... Shane Hume for a chance to be a hero saves the penalty but we're still 3-0 down so it doesn't really matter but still saves the penalty so respect. That was probably the worst reaction I've ever had for a penalty being saved but can't blame me guys because we're 3-0 down. Javi Simmons, Billy Gilmore looking for Liam Dell up here. Out wide for Marcelo. Cross back in for Harvey Elliott of course nobody's gonna attack that one. Billy Gilmore. Xavi Simmons now. Looking for Marcelo out wide inside for Adiemi first time. Oh, what a finish from Karim Adiemi. We just saved the penalty and we're back in the game with about 20 odd minutes to go. You never know. You freaking never know in this sport. Oh, that's a good ball and a chance for Calvert Lewin. If they score, any chance of a comeback is gone. Shane Hume does well. Bukayo Saka backwards for Trossard. Oh, he's done me there. He's completely done me there. 
He actually went for gold from there. Okay, fair play. Anyways, we get that away. Here's Chavi Simmons now driving it forward. Seems awfully quick. And the dribbling is kind of there. He gives it away, though. We still have it with Marcelo. Need a bit of support, though. What's Marcelo done? That is so casual from him. A mistake like that from a Champions League winner. Unacceptable. If that ends up costing us, I'll be genuinely fuming, man. Oh, my God. We're getting outplayed here. And Saka has just put that one top bins. What do we do, guys? What do we do? There's no way of stopping that. It's 4-1 Arsenal. We're taking an L here. Liam Delap. Looking for Diemi. The only ray of sunshine we've had in this game. I was through on goal. I could have possibly scored and got a goal and improved our goal difference. And the ref just calls it quits. That is... Wow. Okay. Anyways, we lose the game regardless of what would have happened there. 4-1. Fair enough, Arsenal. That's all I can say. Let's get back to some transfer business to lighten up the mood. Okay, so we've got an FA Cup game against Tranmere Rovers. I'll be real, I'm not too concerned about the FA Cup this season. Focus is only on the Prem and making it to the Champions League. So, massive rotations in the squad, and we should still be able to get through, though. What's going to happen here? 4-1 win. I'll take it. We may have just found an absolute gem from the Academy. 79 to 94 potential. Already worth about 1.9 million. What's his position going to be? Let's sign him into the Academy and see what's up. I am excited. The scout we've sent to England has already brought a baller. Right back, 65 rated. Insane. 5 foot 8 as well. Right footed. That is honestly a bit mad. I reckon we already promote him to the first team. Pretty much. The kid looks like a baller. 4 star, 4 star as well. What are his stats like overall? Great pace. Physical and defending. He is, he's going to be an amazing right back, guys. Absolutely incredible. 17 and already 65. I'm straight up promoting him to the senior team, man. Literally. I think what I'm going to do, guys, is since we have Casey Meehan in the team, I'm going to bank on Casey Meehan being a left back for the squad. I think that's just better. We'll make Casey Meehan like a left back. Oh, so we can already change his position. There you go. He's a left back now for us. And we'll focus on improving his defensive stats as well. So actually attacking wide back. Let's do that on Casey Meehan. He's going to be the backup left back of the future for us. And we will have Ronnie Smith from the academy. Just found him already in the first team. He is going to be, of course, uh, our backup right back and future first team right back as well. Okay, guys. So I've been looking at options for that left mid position. And it's not been easy. Jack Harrison from Leeds, probably one of the most realistic options with the money we've got. Oh, why did I move away from that screen? Brian Gill would be the dream, the literal dream to get on that left side with the ability he's got. Emil Smithrow would be amazing, but I don't know if we can afford them. We still need to scout them a little bit more to know more about them. I guess we just got to be patient. Not going to lie, guys. I'm going to be simming this one against Palace because I just want to get into more transfer stuff. So we'll take a chance. Sim this one against Palace. Please be a win. It's a two-all draw with Adiemi and Marcelo scoring. I guess we'll take it. We need a result here against Burnley, guys. We absolutely do. We're going to sim this one as well away from home. Nothing except a win will be accepted. And well, Adiemi's brace sees us through. And let's go, guys. Scout reports are in. Let's see what rating we're looking at. Jack Harrison, 80 rated. Callum hudson Adoy 80. But he's out of budget, guys. He is absolutely out of budget. There's no way we're affording him. Oh, hudson Adoy. I think his contract's expiring. And we could get a deal on him. Ooh, this makes things a lot more interesting. How much money are we working with? Can we generate about 37 mil? Can we even do that? I don't think so. Maybe we'll sell Reggie Nicholas or something. But I don't want to do that. Maybe I'll be forced to do that. Yikes, man. How much is he worth? About 10 mil. Oh, it's a tough one, boys. It's a tough one. Maybe then we'll be able to afford Hudson Adoy. Yeah, Brian Gill is just way too expensive. Emil Smithrow, same thing as well. Jack Harrison is probably the only one. Oh, we can get him for a bargain. Guys, you know what? This won't even let us sell Reggie Nicholas. We can keep him and we can afford Jack Harrison as well. Because his contract, I'm pretty sure, is expiring. Let's confirm because he's available on a deal. A unique signing as well because he's one of the players I've never signed. Baller for Leeds United, by the way must say that and he, no his contract's not expiring because his form is bad he's available for a good deal i want to do this guys i absolutely want to do this 
He's more of a classic winger, left-footed player on the left side. Might work. Might be working for us with Harvey Elliott being the one who cuts inside. I'm gonna do this. Jack Harrison to, of course, S2GFC from Leeds. Let's make it happen. Gotta be smart about this, guys. I'm gonna start with a 21 million offer just to, you know, test the waters with Leeds. His form is bad. We might get a deal on him. They're willing to let him go for 23.4. And that leaves us with good money for all the stadium stuff. Fantastic. Let's try and reduce that even further to 22 million. We'll keep that sell-on clause. I don't mind that. And they're willing to accept it. This is a deal. This is what I call a deal. 22 million for an 80-rated Jack Harrison. He instantly become one of the highest-rated players of the team. Plus, he'll add so much to the squad and will allow us to switch to more of a traditional 4-4-2 formation, which I want to do. I'll take it, boys. Let's go. Crucial squad role is what he demands. Absolutely accept that. We'll give him a five-year deal. He's willing to accept that. No release clause. He's willing to accept that as well. He's taking a wage cut to join us. Submit offer. And we could be signing Jack Harrison from Leeds United. He's in his prime. 26. Enough Premier League experience as well. I don't think we can go wrong with this. What a signing this is. Jack Harrison has just been signed by our club. I'm very happy with this. All right, guys. This is a signing. This is really, really a signing. Like... Oh my god, I love it. Absolutely love it. Another FA Cup game that we're going to just use our second team and smash through. It's against Bolton and we still get through with all the changes. Let's go. Wow, a transfer offer coming in for Reggie Nicholas. 9.7 minutes. I don't want to do it, man. He's become such a cult hero. We'll keep him. He's in his prime. I still feel he'll be useful. Okay, guys, so I'm going to be tinkering with our formation with the signing of Harrison. It's going to be a more wide formation, a 4-4-2, with Silva as like a CDM, Gilmore as a centre mid. I think it works so well for us. And look at the squad depth we've got now. I'm loving what we've done with our team right now, guys. Let's go. This is mad. Let's, of course, switch around Tanganga and Kabri, but very excited to see how this translates to on the pitch. That's going to be the new setup we're using with the signing of Harrison. Also, we are not going to be making any more signings. We don't have the money. Six million needs to be kept aside for the stadium stuff. So, yep, we've managed to retain that. So, no more signings. We're done with it. Harrison was like the superstar signing of January. And it's a big one for us as well. From now on, the focus is on the Prem to secure that top four. We're three points clear of Manchester United. Got to keep it that way. Let's now win a game in this episode, boys. We play West Ham away. This should be fun. Trying out the new 4-4-2 formation in this one against West Ham. And let's see how it fares. We need to win this game, boys. We need to win to keep our spot in the top four. Harrison making his debut for S2GFC. Let's go. Uh, when I see the bubbles in the West Ham Stadium, always reminds me of my FIFA 21 West Ham career mode, man. The memories from that save. Who remembers Jared Bowen being an absolute legend there? Ah, uh, the memories. The memories. One thing this new formation should give us is width. I sometimes feel we do lack it, so this could be huge for us. Let's look at that. We're finding spaces. Oliver Bryan. Out wide for Jaden Bogle. Let's see how this goes. Inside for Billy Gilmore. What kind of a touch was that? We still keep hold of it though, which is nice. Back again for Gilmore. Oliver Bryan. No, not much support. So backwards for Silva. Billy Gilmore again. Turning up the pace of the game. But oh, good defending from West Ham. Some great passing from West Ham here. Tony on the ball. Backwards for Declan Rice. And now West Ham playing. We can't let them score first. We cannot. And Shane Hume is not going to allow that. Good save from him. There we go. Harvey Elliott. I see Adiemi in space. What a ball that is for Karim Adiemi. He's got a score. Oh, that's lovely. That is lovely from Adiemi. Calm, composed finish. The man just keeps scoring. Goal after goal after goal for us. Like, you just can't stop him. What a signing has been for us, man. Transformed this club and carrying us in the Premier League with his incredible goal scoring form. By the way, credit to Harvey Elliott, who seems to be bagging assists for fun in this save. And yeah, 1-0 up against West Ham. Just the start we needed. Got to bounce back from that defeat to Arsenal. Perfect way for us to do so. Brian, once again, a ball through to Adiemi. Look at the spaces that we're creating. Back for Brian. And oh, for a moment, I thought he's going to score that. Oliver Brian, Oliver Brian, skying that one. Those kind of shots normally hit the roof of the net. Wow, chance to make it 2-0 squandered. Oliver Bryan, ah, oh, his form is kind of dipped, boys, let me be honest. Championship, he was an absolute god, but in the Prem, he started off well, but oh, he's kind of dipping. Maybe it's the age, man, maybe it's the age, as Harrison tries to find Oliver Bryan. It's an intelligent ball, but nothing comes from it. 
I don't like this. I do not like this big tackle from Matty. Chance for them. West Ham get the equaliser courtesy of Vlasic. What a finish. Even Shane Hume couldn't stop that. 1-1. One, one. <sighs> Tough one. Ball into the box. Please get it away. Ivan Tony, man. He's such a beast. In the air, there isn't much you can do to stop Ivan Tony. Fair enough. It's 2-1 West Ham. Maybe one from distance could work. Billy Gilmore takes a big deflection. I had a feeling that was going in. We need something from a corner. We desperately do, just like them. How does their keeper just come, comes forward and collects it for the corners? Anyways, we're a goal down for the second half. We need to do something. Silva, good pass. Adiemi, chance to shoot. Oh, what a finish from Karim Adiemi. Quick, incisive football. We found the space to shoot and bang. Adiemi inside the box is just... Lethal. Absolutely lethal. It's two all against West Ham. We get the equaliser. Come on. Oh, Antonio with the chance here inside the box. Shane Hume punching it away. Unconvincingly, but yeah, punches it away. Not gonna lie, I haven't seen much from Jack Harrison, but here he's going on a beautiful run. You'll love to see it. Jack Harrison again. This is what you want to see, and this is what you want. The cross stopped by Kufal. Harvey Elliott to put in the ball. It's actually fairly decent. Silva heading it down, but that didn't really work. Cabri is there though, falls for Silva, it's a bit of space to go for goal, takes one, but oh, that, that took a big deflection, we still have it with Adiemi, flicking it up once, flicking it up again, oh my god, Randolph with a ridiculous save, that would have been goal of the season contender, looking for Adiemi, back for Jack Harrison, big chance, a deflection, it's getting slowly and sl slowly but surely more involved in the game, which is great, Silva, Oh, look at that space for Brian, looking for Adiemi once again, through the hands of Randolph, the power shots with Adiemi just go in. I don't know how, but they are. We've made it 3-2 against West Ham. Adiemi is just a monster. Is that a hat-trick from him? I'm pretty sure it is. Adiemi with a hat-trick against West Ham. Oh, the power behind that. I'm pretty sure it is. Are they going to show us that? Please, please do show me whether it's a hat-trick or not. Uh, we'll have to see in-game. Oh, Harrison. Looking for Adiemi, who is just on a roll right now. Looking for Harrison again. Stops it this time. Goes backwards. Matic. Inside for Silva. Ah, oh, good defending from West Ham. But the way we're playing, it's just been incredible in the second half, guys. What a comeback. And got to say, Adiemi has been the focal point. The job's not done, though, for us. Here's Vlasic looking for that cross. Good defending from Tanganga. But he's managed to lose out the battle there. Ben Rama looking for that pass inside. It's great football. And Matic doing some really good defensive work to win that. As I see Harrison making a run. Can he hold off his man? Just about can. But then Dawson with the challenge. It's, it's becoming a back-and-forth game. End-to-end -end football. I don't like this because it creates so much randomness. Like here, chance for them. Got to prevent them from doing anything. They've taken it wide. That's good. I'm going sliding in. Didn't work. Still a chance for West Ham. I'm really terrified right now. Cabri does well. Had to really work hard for this, boys. But we did it. Away against West Ham. Massive three points secured. And yup, it was a hat-trick from Karim Adiemi as he takes home the match ball. You know how mad this is? Karim Adiebi is the top scorer of the Premier League right now. Mental. And we're looking solid for third position in the Premier League right now. Three clear of Manchester United, two clear of Liverpool. The worst goal difference among everyone there. So that is honestly a bit hilarious. But hey, doesn't matter what goal difference we have. It matters that we're third. Transfer deadline day. Not much for us to do. We're just going to get through it. If we can loan out some of the youngsters, that'd be nice. But that's about it, really. And there you go, guys. Transfer window has closed from now until the end of the season. It's going to be a straight push from us to secure Champions League football for next season. I think we all know who's going to end up winning player of the episode. Karim Adiemi. The man is on a mission. What an episode from him. By the way, Tanganga 85 rated now. That's insane. For now though, guys, this is where we're going to wrap things up for the Creator Club episode. Transfer window done. It was pretty quick. Love the signing of Jack Harrison. A bit of unique signing i think he's gonna add a lot to our team so super excited about that that's gonna be it for the episode though drop a like if you've enjoyed this one subscribe if you're new around here catch you guys next time for the next one the road to the champions league has only just begun